Hello again. So we're finally uh, getting to our introduction in logarithms. And the way to start it, the way that I usually start it, is by uh, doing what we already know. And I've used this example countless times. Y equals uh, 2 to the power of x, where 2 is the base. And this is an exponential function. And I went ahead and I made a table, negative 1, 0 0.5. At 0, it's 1. At 1, it's 2. At 2, it's 4. And at 3, it's 8. And I went ahead and I made a graph. And that's great. And uh, the point we get to now is like somebody says, well, is there an inverse function that works for this? You know, like, is there a graph that's an inverse of this? And the answer is yes, there is. And in order to find the inverse, at least uh, graphically, is uh, by drawing a dashed line. Well, you don't have to be dashed, but it has to be the line y equals x. Uh, whenever you're finding an inverse of a function, it reflects off this line right here, y equals x. So, so the graph, if, if you want to take a mirror and, like, you know, translate it over, that's what your inverse function is going to look like. And it's going to happen to be a logarithmic function. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, now, uh, algebraically, how do we do an inverse function? Well, that's not too bad either. What we do is we switch the x and the y. That's all we do. So instead of y, we put x. And instead of x, we put y. And we go ahead and we make a table. And we did five values, so we'll do five values again. Now, the values that I'm going to pick are, um, mm, pardon me, I actually also want to flip this as well, and we'll see what happens. Now, what's very interesting here is, uh, now why, did I, why did I put the y first and not the x first? Well, it's very simple, because now what I'm inputting is my y values to figure out what my x values are. Uh, actually, I'm not going to end up doing that in the end, but it's just a way to kind of make a connection. So if I input the first y value, and I'm going to start with the same uh, values that I input for the x value, but now I'm going to do it for my y. I'm going to substitute in negative 1, then 0, then 1, then 2, and then 3. Again, if you're uh, trying to find an inverse, switch the x and the y, and then uh, put the input values that you did for x as a y. Now when you do that, you get very interesting results here. And we'll start with the easiest one. 2 to the 0 is 1. Uh, 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. And 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half or 0 0.5. Now that's not correct uh, theoretically to do because y is actually my output and x is my input. So why am I doing that? Well, like I said, it's a precursor step to what I'm supposed to do. And I want to go ahead and graph this, which I'm going to do right now. So at negative 1 for y, it, x is at 0 0.5. So it's like right there. And at 0 for y, now careful here, at 0 for y, x is 1. And at 1 for y, which is right here, x is 2. And at 2 for y, which is right there, x is 4. And at 3 for y, x is 8. And if I graph that, I get something that looks like this. Now what's really interesting is it's, it's a mirror, but it's not you know, like a perfect graph. I mean, work out as well as I wanted it to, but yeah, whatever, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, actually, I should make it, eh, you get the point. Kind of like that, I hope. Uh, it'll never go past this value, in fact, it'll never touch x equals zero, and it grows very slowly. As this one kind of picks up, like this, this one kind of grows like this. Now, it keeps going up and up and up and up, but it's, uh, it it's, uh, takes a very long time, to say the least. Now, the domain, it's from here all the way to infinity, and it doesn't actually include the number zero, because it'll never actually touch zero, and the range goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, uh, very slowly, mind you. So it's really cool. I'm looking at that and I'm like, okay, you know, it's, it's a little bit difficult to buy into at first, but it's not that bad. Now, there are some stipulations behind here. The base that we have to use for a logarithmic function, for this uh, little inverse, x equals 2y, it can't be um, less than zero. I mean, sorry, it has to be greater than zero. It can't be, it can't be uh, zero because zero to any function is not going to work. It's just going to be zero. 
And it can't be negative because we're, we were supposed to do an inverse of this one. So our base has to remain the same. It has to remain positive. What's really interesting as well is our base <coughs> excuse me, can't equal negative 1 because, again, we just have a straight line. And this is for all x that's greater than 0, basically from here to here. It doesn't include the number 0 and it doesn't include negatives. It just goes from here to here. And this is only, this stipulation is if and only if all these are true. So log base b of x equals y is the same thing as b, uh, the base of y equals x. And that's what we're going to get to right now. But in order to do that, I have to erase some steps here. Not steps, but uh, some work. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and erase this too. I'm going to leave the graph because it's nice and pretty. So here we go. We have uh, y equals 2x, which, uh, when I invert it, is x equals 2 to the power of y. Now, whenever I'm solving, x is always my input, and y is always my output. The problem is that y is my input right now, and x is my output. So I've got to uh, formulate the function, or uh, figure out the function properly so it works out. And basically what I do is I do its inverse operation in order to solve for y in order to get y by itself, because I do have to get y by itself. Now, how do I get y by itself? And some people say, well, don't you divide by 2? And the answer is no, you don't divide by 2, because this isn't 2 times y equals x, it's 2 to the power of y equals x. What you do is this little, fun little thing right here. You take the log of base 2 to the 2y. So you put a log base 2 in front of 2y. Whatever this base is, is the log, that you, is the log, the base of the log. So if this were 3 to the y, it would be log base 3. If this was 5y, it would be log base 5. But what you do on one side of the equation, you better do on the other. Log base 2 of x. Now, what's really interesting is this. When you have a log of a specific base, and it's with the base of a function, and the bases are the same, they become 1. You know, they're inverses of each other, so they kind of can't, well, they don't kind of, they cancel out. It's like matrices, actually, or just uh, working with inverse operations in general. That becomes 1, or just 1y, or just y equals log base 2 of x. Now, if I want to write it really properly, it'd be y equals log base 2 of x. And there you go. That's your stipulation. Your base has to be greater than 0. It can't equal 1. And what I mean by that is right here. This can't be 0. I'm sorry. It's got to be greater than 0. It can't be equal to 1. And it's for all x values that are greater than 0. So this x value has to be greater than 0 no matter what. Whenever I'm doing this problem, this number right here has to be greater than 0 and can't equal 1. And it's true. Simple as that. We just solve for y. Now what's really interesting is this is called logarithmic form because it's a log. And it's also the graph to this particular equation. And sometimes you say, well, I thought, uh, I thought this was the graph to this equation. It is. It's in exponential form. This one is in logarithmic form. And when you're given problems, you're actually going to do them in logs. So you can rewrite it either way. In fact, your book will ask you, or your teacher will ask you too, like write, write this in exponential form, write this in logarithmic form. And it's the same thing as long as these stipulations are true. So y equals log base 2 of x, x equals 2 to the y. I, it should be said this, that you're going to get problems once in a while that won't say this little number here. And if it doesn't, it's assumed that the number is 10. It's a, it's a log base 10 function. If it does have a number here, that's the base that we're working with. So one last thing I kind of want to go over really quickly. This and this are the same, right? You know, I've got to stress that. And a way to think about it is this. How do I rewrite this as this and vice versa? Here's the way I think about it. What's this number called? It's called a base. And you take it to whatever this is, and it's equal to this. It's the same exact thing. Of course it is. And if you want to rewrite it, remember this is your base, so it's log of the base of x equals the exponent. So I kind of do that. Now you should really practice that in terms of exponential and logarithmic forms. 
uh, in, in order to write it because it'll come back to haunt you if you don't know how to do that, especially with uh, logarithms. But like I said, this is an introduction to logarithms. We'll do some examples after this and hopefully you won't find it too cumbersome, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Other than that, have a great day for now. Goodbye.